completion of university is a choice, and some are now deciding to change what they study, and others not to go at all. Well, now, Professor Howard Hobson is an Oxford academic and member of the Council for the Defence of British Universities, Beverly Nielsen, who is director of the engagement at Birmingham City University, and also here. And Ian Zahawi is a Conservative MP and former businessman who sits on the Business Innovations and Skills Committee. And Alice Swift is a student that was on the march today. Um, what's wrong with the re-evaluation, Professor, then, of what universities are for? Well, I don't think anyone uh, would deny that universities need to be re-evaluated incrementally on an ongoing basis. Why are you against it, then? What I'm, what I'm against is the fundamental and radical overhaul of one of the finest university systems in the world. It's one of the great national assets this country possesses. It's universally regarded around the world as one of the finest things that Britain does. That it should be incrementally overhauled in, in new economic circumstances, I think, is, is undeniable. But that's not what the government has set out to do. From the moment the Brown Review was published, from the moment the White Paper was published, the government was talking about a fundamental, radical shakeup of higher education. And it seems to many people inside the universities as a very important thing to do in a in an area where the universities have never been more important than the knowledge economy, and our competitive advantages right. have never been so more difficult to, to obtain. To fundamentally this is apparently a, a, an epitaph you seek for your government. Well, uh, I sat on the committee that took the evidence. I wish Howard was there to listen to the evidence. Uh, you know, let's not. You know, Howard's getting stuck on language. The reality is, we're putting the students at the heart of the system, and that's a good thing. Let me just explain what that means. It means students now are able to compare and contrast and see which courses are the right ones for them. More engagement with business, more engagement with employers, not just businesses, but the third sector, service sector, with universities. But just one last thing, Jack, before I finish. The old system, if you're earning 21,000 today, you'll be paying 470 pounds a month in payment back. Under the new system, if you earn over 21,000, that's when you start paying. If you earn 22,000, you only pay 90 pounds a year. Um, There's so much misinformation okay. about it. Okay, let's, let's concern with how these fees are paid back than with what it is doing to education. Now, what is your job at Birmingham City University? I'm Director of Employer Engagement. Uh, what does that mean? Well, what that means is that we're looking all the time about how employers are involved in the relevance of uh, what our students are learning. So we're working with employers on co-creation of courses to ensure that we're meeting so the needs of employers. You're, you're churning out of work. Well, we're, we're, no, I think we would regard our education, the education of Friday, so much more than just uh, equipping them for their work. But they, they have knowledge, they have the ability to think creatively, critically, analytically, work in teams. That's what students want. They want a job at the end of it. Yes, of course they want a job. But I think uh, the way that um, our university system is being shaken up at the moment to be beholden to the market is extremely dangerous. I mean, Why is it dangerous? It's very dangerous. So at the University of Birmingham, um, loads of departments that aren't seen as something that can contribute to a market economy or to the dictate of a market economy, things like archaeology, antiquity, sociology, um, all of these subjects um, are very much under threat and um, because they're not... they're not a lot of students want to study them. No, that's not t that's not true at all. There are well, plenty. Maybe under threat. They are under threat at the University of Birmingham. They are they are threatening to close down these departments as we speak. Look, if there were lots of students who wanted to study those subjects and pay the fees to do so, I suspect they'd be kept out. No, absolutely not. No, there are lots of students that want to study these subjects. Sociology, especially, the University of Birmingham has why is, a why is it closing these subjects to down, then? down when there is a huge demand for sociology. That's why it can't, it can't well, close it down. Well, there you are. That's it. Well, if the University of Birmingham is closing down courses where there's massive demand, then there's something wrong at the university. But I don't think that is happening. The reality, Alice, that if you look at the evidence, we saw it in the program, the Russell Point University, and this is the same in America, where you see places like Harvard do really well in attracting students from, from um, uh, uh, you know, uh, lower socio-demographic backgrounds into their courses because they become much more aware of their responsibility, social responsibility. And that's beginning to happen with the Russell Group, which is what, what the evidence shows. Now, at the Select Committee, we're going to monitor the process, we're going to monitor this thing. But the idea that, you know, if, you're, if you're saying that the market is a bad thing because it gets employers, and employers, not just, not, just, not just private sector, but the 
service sector, the third sector. I disagree with that. University of Birmingham has departments that are beholden to fossil fuel companies, beholden to them, and teach such a wide variety of oil industry based practices. In 30 years' time, what are we going to do when we reach a climate catastrophe? The market works on short termism and it does not consider these aspects at all, and we're completely beholden to it under this new regime. Professor, there's, an, there's, an, there's another question here, and it is about a broader social context is what, frankly, I mean, I don't want to be rude, but what, what is the point of people paying their taxes and what do you, what your, your what, early modern intellectual history of subjects, you know, most of us don't really, why should the taxpayer support that sort of activity? Well, I mean, there's a huge range of uh, answers to that question. The, the public sort of market-facing face of the university is crucially important, but what universities fundamentally do contribution to the market. Well, I'm here discussing it on your program. Uh, you don't get paid much for this, I'll tell you. In, indeed, indeed. As a, as, a, as a matter of fact, the project which I uh, uh, directed the Oxford University has raised two and a half million dollars of American money. So if, if you're asking for a direct con contribution to the market, there you have it. This is more money than I'm going to make in a very substantial fraction of my career. Okay. But if you're, if you're asking a more general question, which I presume you are, which is about why every modern, western, prosperous, democratic country for the last 50 years has, uh, has, has supported a publicly subsidized university system, uh, then there are all kinds of reasons for that. Uh, there is the fact that the democratic uh, uh, polity depends upon having an educated electorate. There's the fact that innovation is fundamentally necessary for the economy. There's the fact that our cultural industries as well, which are a very vital and important part of our of our of our economy uh, depend directly on on universities. Yeah, we, I mean, uh, and the, but the really extraordinary thing, and this is something which hasn't been picked up uh, in the media, this is the first time in modern history that a publicly funded university system has been eliminated with the stroke of a pen. There's 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 now so the Ben students just don't want to study a lot. No, no, no. I'm talking about the fact. I'm talking about the fact that in every other country, every other country, a. Uh, a university system exists which is directly funded by taxpayers' money. England has just done something which is radical and unprecedented, which is to remove overnight, at the stroke of a pen, the like, direct funding I'd just like to make the point about innovation. I mean, it's absolutely essential to our economy that we innovate. Um, we've just done a study through our Think and Do Tank at Birmingham City University, which showing, demonstrating the enormous value of design and innovation to our economy in the Midlands. So, so we're, you know, this is all about encouraging radical innovation, encouraging lateral thoughts, so probably the sorts of things that come very natural in your sort of area. So I don't think it's do one or the other. I think it's a luxury. No, I don't. I do. do you think that society is in any way harmed if, as, let's say for the sake of argument that Alice is right, let's say that certain subjects cease to be taught in universities. It doesn't matter whether it's specifically archaeology or something else. But something that is a non-vocational subject does society suffer because of that? Uh, I, th I think really it's about understanding where the value is of these different subjects. I, I, I think they, they can does suffer. So why? Absolutely. Why? Because, because education is a public good, it is a social good, and it can't be beholden mm. to whatever the short term that's, prospects that's, that's are. A million, the that's, that's a mere yeah. assertion. It doesn't need to be a trade off. You know, we don't need to go. Just you know, purely market the evidence all does seem to suggest that students are voting with their feet. Some are, and what you'll get is some of the very successful universities will continue to you know, subsidise courses that they think are for the social good. They are good things to have in a society. There's nothing wrong with that. Do you think it matters then that fewer people wish to study non-European languages? But well, I think it matters that we make sure that there's enough courses, enough diversity in the economy so that there is choice for everyone. We've and that's not what your system world. is allowing to happen. System. I mean, this is a, this is fund, fundamentally important point. I mean, the ascended economies of the world are not in Europe. If we want to understand and be able to gauge with uh, the ascended economies in the world, we certainly have to maintain the capacity to teach our young people non-European languages. Now, if if, if 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 the market signals seem to be suggesting to students that that, that this is not a profitable activity, then we're dealing with market failure. The, the market signals are failing to convince students to, to study things we, we desperately need. I'd like to, can, I, can I make a more general point here? You better be quick. I will try. I will try. The, the, the real point is that although engaging directly with the market is one of the very important things that universities do, the really fundamental, crucial, unique things that universities do is stay way back from the short-term cycle of, of journalism, the short-term cycle of politics, the short-term cycle of business, and, and engage people's mind with the really big problems. Now, we're, we're entering a century in which we're being faced by the most uh, enormous problems.
problems, and it is vitally important that universities not be swallowed up by the short-termism of the polit political cycle. Thank you all very much. Now, in China, hundreds of activists have uh, 